warm welcome to all worshiping. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, which brings us to the close of the Advent season. Pray that this has been a spiritually uplifting period for you as we prepare to receive the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Please stand. In the name of God, whose Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go before us, O Lord, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Turn to the Catechism, page 392. And redirect our attention to questions number 21 and 22. What is our duty to God? God, love God with all our heart, worship and obey only God. Put nothing in the place of God. Show reverence for God, thought, word, and and to set aside regular times for worship, prayer, and the study of God. What is our duty to our neighbor? Necessities of life for all people. And to use God's gifts of our talents and possessions as persons who must answer for them for God. To speak the truth and not to mislead others by our silence. To resist the temptations of envy, greed, and jealousy. To rejoice in other people's gifts and talents. And to do our duty. Who has called us into fellowship? The enjoy hymn number forty eight four eight.
as continues on page 216, 206, the penitential order. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us reflect on his holy word and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sin so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sin. His mercy endures forever. We pray together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel or sit as is convenient for you. Let us confess together. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We have not forgiven others as we desire to be forgiven. We have not forgiven ourselves as we have been forgiven. Our Our Lord. Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, we confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comfort and our dishonesty in daily life and work, we confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgment. For uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors. And for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, 
and let your anger depart from us. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people the impenitence, the absolution and remission of the sin. Pardon and absolve all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please in which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit for the ministry of the word, the first scripture reading. First reading is taken from Second Samuel chapter seven, one to eleven, and verse six. Now, when the king was settled in his house, the Lord had given him rest from all of his enemies around him. The king said to the prophet Nathan, "See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but..." The ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But the same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I bought up the people from Israel, from Egypt, to do this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, I, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribulant, tribulant leaders of Israel, whom I command, commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus shall you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from the I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people of Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones on the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own palace, 
and be distributed, disrupted no more than evildoers shall afflict on them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies forever. The Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever. Before me, your throne shall be established forever. Here ends the word of God. Please remain seated for the choral rendition of Psalm 89, verses 1 to 4 and 19 to 26. Sure. 
second reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 16, verses 25 to 27. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing the gradual hymn number 37, 3, 7. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to Christ our Savior. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning at the 26th verse. And it happened in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. 
But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise the Christ our Lord. Please be seated. share with you on the theme, the ever-presentness of God. The ever-presentness of God. And I take as the scripture reading to guide our reflection on this theme, these words from the gospel passage just proclaimed, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, and in particular, verse 38, and it reads, Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. In the year 1860, Charles Blondin became renowned for having four times walk across the Niagara Falls in North America on a rope stretched tightly from one side to the other. On one occasion, he pushed a wheelbarrow. On another, he carried a man on his back. But when he offered to carry across another man who was watching, the man refused. And Blondin asked, do you believe that I can do it? Yes, I do, replied the man, but I am not willing to try. Although the man was convinced that Blondin was capable of manipulating the dangerous high crossing, not once, not twice, but four times, the man was not willing to trust Blondin with his life. And such is faith in God. Faith in God means more than simply believing about God and accepting what God says. 
Faith in God means relying on God and committing oneself to God. No matter the circumstance, we need not fear, for God is ever near. Today, we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, the Sunday before Christmas, and as always at this time, expectations run high. Expectations of family and friends coming home for the season. Expectations of receiving barrel of clothes and gifts. Perhaps expectations of going to church and later sharing Christmas goodies. In short, expectations of joy and merriment as we celebrate the Christmas season. The gospel story just proclaimed tells an interesting story at a time when our expectations are bleak as we brave the current COVID-19 pandemic. There's much uncertainty and despair at loss of jobs. Teachers and students are frantic about the new demands of teaching and learning. Family and friends are restricted in their travel. And the usual barrels of goodies are scarce in coming from abroad. In the gospel passage appointed for today's reflection, the evangelist Luke reminds his readers of the assurance of the ever-presentness of God, even in seemingly troubling times. And this story of the announcement of the birth of the long-awaited Messiah tells of an exercise of faith in God even when circumstances were life-threatening. The announcement to a young virgin woman from a remote town of Nazareth in Galilee who must have been looking forward with joyful expectation to being married. Instead, receive startling news that could have resulted in the loss of her life. Just imagine what should have been a mountaintop experience for her was turned into a bleak expectation. For according to Jewish law, this virgin woman becoming pregnant under circumstances outside of her betrothal could have been stoned to death and her family publicly shamed. But standing on faith in God, she quickly learnt that there was no need to fear, God is near. Aware that responding to God's call on her to be the bearer of the Christ child could place her in a valley of humiliation at a time when she was enjoying a moment of mountaintop bliss the young Virgin Mary surrendered to the will of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. When the angel said to Mary, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, etc., etc. For a brief moment, the news startled Mary. And she asked of the angel, How can this be, since I have no husband? 
I know no man. But her faith in God kicked in and she chose not to despair, but rather to rely on the assurance of the presentness of God. That God will be with her even though she will be thrown into public shame and humiliation. Mary cast all pride and self-preservation aside and surrendered to God's call on her life. And Luke seems to be making some compelling assertions about the Christian faith in God. And a couple of significant things surface about the nature of God and why we can trust in God even when circumstances around us are life-threatening. First of all, we note, Mary's humble beginnings were not indicative of her calling to be the mother of the expected Messiah. A feat of blessedness far beyond Mary's imagination. Secondly, like all other Jews, Mary would have been expecting the Messiah to come from high religious stock. After all, her faith had taught her that the Messiah would come from the line of the Davidic king, great David's greater son, who would be known as the son of the Most High. But Mary was of lowly stock. No way could she be a factor in such an exalted and divine act. Thirdly, the favor bestowed upon Mary was not for personal gain or popularity or privilege. Hers was a calling to serve God, irrespective of the personal cost. She surrendered to the will of God. Something that all of us must bear in mind, especially clergy like myself, that when we are called and set apart for the work of God among his people, it is not a privilege. We should not see ourselves as having exalted status above everybody else. We are called to be servants of God's people. Have you ever attended a service with a visiting preacher and the opening words before he or she delivers the sermon would say, I am honored to be here this morning to deliver the word of God. I am grateful to so-and-so for having given me this privilege. It's not a privilege. Because at the end of the day, we claim no kudos. We are only unworthy servants doing our master's bidding. Any praise, any glory belong to God. And that's why you may hear, some of you will say to me at the end of Mass, from time to time, good sermon, Reverend Glasgow, and I reply, give God the praise. Give God the praise. It is what God has done in me and through me. Mary's reaction reminded us that we are not here to seek exalted status, but to serve God faithfully, cost us what it may. I'm wondering if I should put you on the spot. Maybe not. I won't be naughty today. Those of us who would have done evening prayer last Friday, I was about to ask by show of hands, but I won't do that. If you done evening prayer last Friday, 
You would recall Jesus' teaching to his disciples as he was preparing to face his own valley of humiliation. The reading was taken from Luke chapter 22, verses 31 to 38. And there Luke records, Jesus, after eating the Passover meal with the disciples, and alerting them that his betrayal is at hand. The moment of his death is nearing. Luke reports that Jesus' disciples began to talk about status and position and privilege and who will be the greatest in the kingdom of God. Jesus had just shared with them one more time that he will be going to Jerusalem. He will be arrested, crucified, died, and buried. And all they can talk, think about is who is the greatest. And Jesus makes a puzzling pronouncement to the disciples. He reminded them that when he had first sent them out in the mission field, he had instructed them to go out relying on the hospitality of those among whom they would minister. On that occasion, they were charged not to take any personal conveniences, not even a sword for self-defense. But now on this occasion, as he is preparing to face his own agony and death, he counsels his disciples to quote, sell their cloak and buy a sword, unquote. Luke chapter 22, verse 6. Seems contradictory. And the disciples, not quite grasping what Jesus was trying to say to them, they responded, Lord, look, here are two swords. Jesus swiftly dismisses their misguided thoughts of violence, saying, it is enough. It is enough. Speaking metaphorically, Jesus was saying to his disciples that just as he was about to face his fatal persecution, they too, as his followers, will meet similar fate. But his call to such a violent end will be met by his reliance and faith in his father's will for him. Jesus held on to the assurance of the presentness of God, even in troubling times, even in the valley of humiliation, or as the psalmist declares in Psalm 23, verse 4, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So too must Christian disciples rely and trust in God and not on self-defense and self-preservation. What then can be our takeaway from this teaching on this fourth Sunday of Advent? As we come to the close of the season and prepare to welcome the to celebrate the birth of the Messiah, our Savior and Redeemer. May we too rest easily in the assurance that God is with us. God is ever present, even in this current and tumultuous experience of a pandemic disease. We need not despair and lose hope. For God is in the valley with us, working his purpose out. So have faith in him. This too shall pass. May ours ever be the disposition of the blessed virgin woman in declaring, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me 
according to your word. Whatever the circumstance, whatever the challenge, we keep faith in God. For God is ever near. Amen. And from our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 106. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, only Son, our Lord. Was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints, forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Already had our intercessory prayers. Absolution, we turn now to the greeting of peace. Greeting of peace. Page 125, Form C. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. They with us of Christ are acceptable to God and approved by others. Peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. As we prepare ourselves for Holy Communion, I remind us that in the center of the aisle, there is the offering basket. By now, you should have placed your offering in the basket, or you can do so now. Please remember the protocols, COVID protocols, as you're coming forward to receive communion. Observe the distant markings on, in the aisle. There will be a sanitation unit right here by the priest Sedilla. You sanitize your hands and come forward one by one to receive Holy Communion in one time. The Offertory Hymn number 52, 5 two.
presentation of the offering form B per page 126. Form B. Together. Father, we hope you use this which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work. We come through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love for the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks. Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, God Almighty, everlasting God. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of eternal life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearance. Therefore, we praise you. Join in our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your Lord. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth. Eucharistic prayer, form D, form D, beginning on page 140. All glory, praise, and thanksgiving be unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. You created the world and all mankind and of your tender mercy gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there by his own oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly beseech and be pleased to accept, bless, and sanctify these gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. Then he given thanks to you, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. In faith we acclaim you, O Christ. By you destroyed our death, rising you restored our life. 
Christ Jesus. Now therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we your servants with all your holy people, having in remembrance the blessed passion and mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your beloved Son, to offer unto your divine majesty this bread of eternal life and this cup of everlasting salvation, rendering thanks to you for the wonderful redemption which you have made possible for us. Amen. And we beseech your Father to accept upon your heavenly altar this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, all who shall be partakers of this Holy Communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction and be numbered in the glorious company of the saints. Here we offer and present unto you, O Lord, ourselves. Our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. And although we are unworthy to offer unto you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merit. Pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, throughout all ages, world without end. Page 144. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins as we go to the Save us from the time of trial and for us from evil. For the kingdom, power, Second Agnes Day Proclamation, page 107. Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, bearer of our sins, Jesus, redeemer of the world. The invitation form C, page 100. And 46. My brothers and sisters in Christ, draw near and receive the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ with faith and thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this our table, most merciful Father, trusting in our own righteousness, but only in your boundless mercy. Yes, sir. 
to give God thanks for the grace received and the sacrament of the body and blood of his son, Jesus Christ. May we be strengthened through the work he's given us to to surrender to him, even in the midst of our own values of humiliation. Trust God, for he is ever present. Post communion prayer is the last prayer beginning on page 148. the children in the congregation please stand. Children. Children's hymn number 659. All children stand. Big children, little children, in between children. This is a hymn of blessing for you. 659. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, 
Jesus Christ, and for showing us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Please bow your head for the final blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Remember, we have started the Novena Prayer this morning. What time is it? 5.30. And continue for the next eight mornings. So tomorrow morning, God Spirit alive. We'll be right here again at 5.30 a.m. to continue our Novena prayer. Recessional hymn number 66. 56, sorry, 56.
We want to take this opportunity to express our gratitude to all the media houses that have graciously consented to broadcast this act of worship. We pray that as the gospel goes out, hearts will be turned and our faith would be deepened in God as we learn to trust. The Lord be with you. The Mass is ended. Go in to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen.